London. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Aren't you guys happy that uh, finally you have to breathe freely? <laughs> Some of you. So we thank God for this moment. And it's uh, Father's Day. We want to give special thank you and special welcome to all the fathers in the church and out of the church. This morning during Sabbath school, uh, our brother Kermani, he mentioned something and I quote, he said, because we have one father, we are all brothers and sisters. I remember uh, th there's a story that is told that uh, there was a man, it was a homeless man, he was walking around 
asking for food to eat. And he came and knocked on the door of a, of a lady. Turned out the lady was, uh, was a Christian. Nobody had given him food. But this Christian woman looked at the man. He smelled not so good. And he looked shabby. And the Christian woman, because nobody had given him food, the, the Christian woman said, come, come around the back of the house. I, I'll get you something to eat. And so he went around the house. She opened the back door to the kitchen and then uh, said, you can, you can sit down there. Uh, there's a little stool there beside the door. Just sit on the stool beside the door. And I'll heat up some food for you. So she got some food that she had from the previous day and heat it up. And then she gives the, the man, uh, she places it in front of the man to eat. But before eating, uh, she, she, she says to the, to the man, let us pray. You know, let us pray before we eat. And just, do you know how to pray? The man said, well, I don't know how to pray. And she said, just answer after me. You know, just repeat after me, sorry. So the lady said, our father who art in heaven. And the man said, your father who art in heaven. And then the lady, she, she, she paused and then she said, no, just repeat what I say after me. Okay, we are praying together. Our Father who art in heaven. And the homeless man said, Your Father who art in heaven. So this woman stopped and looked at the man curiously and asked him, Sir, why don't you say our Father? Why do you, why do you keep on saying your Father like my Father? He said, well, um, I don't consider him my, uh, our father. I consider him your father. Because when I came in here, you asked me to come through the back door. And then you asked me to sit uh, on the stool. You didn't ask me to come through the main door. You asked me to sit on the stool instead of sitting on the dining table. And then you got the leftover food from yesterday and you gave it to me and asked me to sit beside the door and eat. So if he is our father, I would be your brother. That would make you my sister. And so I don't see that that is the case here. So I think he is your father. Now that brings me back to what Barak Kemani said. Because we have one father, we are all brothers and sisters. So what lesson do we get from, from this story? Uh, it takes me back, it reminds me of the story of the, the, the Good Samaritan when they asked Jesus, who is your neighbor, right? The same thing. And Jesus told the story of a Good Samaritan, which we are all familiar with. And the conclusion of the story is that, what? Who is your neighbor? Who knows who your neighbor is? Anybody knows who your neighbor is? Is it your brother from the same father? Is it your sister you go to church with? Who is your neighbor? So your neighbor is who? Anybody. That's right. Your neighbor is anybody. So this, this story tells us that we should treat everyone the way God would like us to treat them. Right? We should treat everyone with respect, with humility. And as Christians, we are copying the examples of Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ did not, uh, did not exalt certain people and humble certain people. He said, no, we should treat everyone because everyone is equal before God. So as brothers and sisters, we find ourselves sometimes trying to discriminate between people, uh, maybe because of their looks, or because of their statute in society. But we should treat everyone with humility, kindness, and love. Happy Father's Day to everyone. And uh, as we are in prayers, before I conclude, 
uh, we want to take this opportunity, this moment, to have a word of prayer. Uh, we pray for our fathers all around the world, our mothers as well. Uh, uh, we also pray for our brothers and sisters. And if you have any other thing that you would like to pray for, uh, we can pray for that as well. So I'm going to lead in a word of prayer. And after that, we'll have two minutes for everyone to just bow down quietly and have a word of prayer. Ask God what you would like. Right? So let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this moment. We thank you for bringing us here. We thank you that we have gotten here safely. We thank you, Lord, for the air we breathe, because we know that sometimes it costs money to breathe this air, so I've learned from the pandemic. We thank you for the water that we drink, because we know that there are people in this world who have no drinking water. We thank you for the food that you have blessed us with, because we know that many are starving all around the world. Help us to remember those in need and treat them as our brothers and as our sisters. Help us to respect our fathers that you have given us in this world and help us to show them the love that you want us to show towards them. For we know that it's not easy to be a father. Likewise, it's not easy to be a mother. Give us the spirit of honor to our parents on this day, O oh Lord, so that as children we shall abide in the commandments that you have given us. We pray that you guide and lead our fathers and our mothers as well on this day and on any other day as we move forward in the Lord. May you continue to provide for those that are lacking parents that are struggling to feed their children or to make ends meet. And may you, to may you continue to give us the strength that we need and to increase our faith. Lord, at this moment, we're going to each dedicate two minutes to give our prayers to you in silence. And you, as the God who hears everything that is said in silence, in secret, will reward us openly. So we take two minutes to pray silently. We ask through Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Holy God, holy God, holy God, this is my vow. 
Please remain standing for the scripture reading. Today I will be reading Acts chapter 16, verses 23 to 33. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep awaking from sleeping sleep and seeing the prison doors open supposing the prisoner had fled drew his sword and was about to kill himself but paul called him but paul called with a loud voice saying do not do yourself no harm for we are all here then he called for a light ran in and fell down trembling before paul and silas and he bought that brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. reverently as we uh, seek the Lord in prayer. Give up a God, the one in whom we, move, we live and move and have our very being. We just want to thank you today for raising us up. Uh, we thank you for starting us on our day. We thank you that you have loved us with an everlasting love and with tender kindness. It's your intent to draw us to yourself. You are for us, not against us. And we thank you today, God, that we can call you our Father uh, because Jesus died on Calvary's cross that our sins may be forgiven and that we may be restored into right relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, that we are sin abound, grace much more abound. And so now, God, we confess our sins. Uh, We give to you our iniquity. We ask that you will block out our transgressions and that you will remove our sin far from us, that we may live free for who the sun sets free is free indeed. I pray today, Lord, for those who are sick, those who are struggling, 
those who have difficulty in their marriages, those who have difficulty in their families, those who are experiencing financial difficulty, may you be to each one of us all that we need. Today, God, we ask that you will bless this congregation. And we pray, God, that you will set us ablaze by the power of your Holy Spirit. Anoint every believer. May we have a deep, rich, and fulfilling connection with you. May we not behave as if we're orphans, like we are fatherless, that we are widows, Lord, because you said who mother and father forsake, you will take up. You promised that you will be with us even unto the ends of the world. And yet we're still here, which means that you're present with us. You are present help even in the time of trouble. And so we pray that you will bless the service today. And we ask that whatever may be taking our minds away, may you focus it right now, God, on you. May we see you. May we experience you. May we encounter you knowing that our sins are forgiven and that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done and what you will continue to do in your church. And when we would have left this place, may we say it was good to have been in the house of the Lord. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Check, check, one. Good morning, everyone. Are you guys happy to be here today? No, you don't sound like you're very happy to be here. Are you happy to be here? See, that's what I'm talking about right there. The little girl right there, she's saying yes, but we're saying yeah. Come on. North London, are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord, let me hear you say amen. Come on, I want to hear louder than that. Amen. I want to hear you say thank you, Jesus. Come on, man. When you're in the house of the Lord, we're here to what? We're here to lift up his name. We're here to give him the highest praise, right? Okay, so that's what we're going to be here doing here today. So today... The privilege was given to me to do a special selection. But I'm a little bit nervous because it's been a long time. So please bear with me as I bring forward this song. But this song is to remind us that the blood of Jesus is still prevails. And it will always prevail. Right? It doesn't matter what we're going through. It doesn't matter what our circumstances. It doesn't matter what trials we're going through it still will prevail. So at this point, I'm going to remind you that his blood prevails. Jesus' blood are the remedy. Jesus' blood are the remedy. Jesus' blood are the remedy. The good, good remedy. Jesus' blood are the remedy. Jesus' blood are the remedy. Jesus' blood are the remedy, the good, good remedy. His blood prevails, the blood of the risen Lamb. There is power, power to save, just as, as in olden days. The blood prevails, 
the blood of the risen lamb there is power and power to save just as as in olden days i was once a sinner far away from god jesus came along my way and he gave my heart a song now i have made happy hear the reason why jesus took my heavy load and now i am made whole the blood prevails the blood of the reason lamb there is power power to save just as as in olden days come on listen to me people hear me when i say the lord up in heaven he hears you when you pray he heal you when you're sinful heal you when you're sick to so take a walk to heaven if you just only believe the blood prevails the blood of the reason lamb there is power power to save just as as in olden days you know what because his blood prevails you know what jesus is my provider he is your provider and he's for everyone providers out there jesus is my provider jesus is my provider jesus is my provider he always provide for me come on jesus is my provider jesus is my provider jesus is my provider he always provide for me the blood prevails the blood of the reason lamb there is power power to save just as as in olden days there is power power to save just as as in olden days Stories of the Bible, Daniel in the Lion's Den. This is Daniel, oh, hey. who was a Jewish man who was taken to Babylon when he was very young. Mm -hmm. Daniel loved God and followed God's rules. He talked to God three times a day and asked God for help often. Daniel served in the Babylonian king's court for many years yeah, I know him. and under many kings. Hey, Daniel. Daniel always proved himself to be more capable than all the other court officials. My hero, I think. Wow, well, time. Daniel was serving under King Darius, and because of his great abilities, the king made plans to place him in charge of the entire empire. Wow, okay. The other court officials searched for some fault in Daniel, but they couldn't find anything wrong with him. He was faithful, responsible, and completely trustworthy. Yeah. Wait. The court officials realized the only way to get at Daniel would be to challenge his faith. Come on. So they went to King Darius. Yeah. 
Excuse me, Your Majesty. And advised him to make a law that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone except King Darius will be thrown into the lion's den. I like it. King Darius signed this law, and once a Babylonian king signed a law, it could not be overruled. When Daniel learned of this law, he went home and knelt down, as he always did, to pray in his room with the windows open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he always had done, giving thanks to God and asking for his help. The officials went to Daniel's house and found him praying. Gotcha! They went to the king and reminded him of the law. I remember. Well... Then they said that Daniel had been found praying to God three times a day. What? When the king heard this, he was very upset. Get over here. And he spent the whole day trying to think of a way to save Daniel. Wait, what? By that evening, the court officials came back to the king <coughs> and reminded him that no law signed by the Babylonian king could be overruled. So at last, the king gave orders for Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den. The king said to him, May your God, who you serve faithfully, rescue you. Then the lion's den was sealed shut with Daniel inside. The king spent the night fasting and couldn't sleep. Then very early in the morning, the king hurried to the lion's den. He called out, Hey Daniel! Was your God able to rescue you from the lions? And Daniel answered, Long live the king! My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight. The king was overjoyed and ordered that Daniel be taken out of the lion's den. Then the king ordered the men who had schemed against Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den as punishment. Daniel was safe. There was not a scratch on him, for he trusted in God. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to church today, and a very uh, happy Father's Day to the fathers. Um, join us in singing today the songs that you know and songs that you don't. Just feel it with us. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great pain of searing heart. The Father turns His face away as wounds which mar the chosen one. Bring men to glory Behold the man upon the cross My sin upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there. 
until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. Holy, 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 high and lifted up, 
shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to making ways for me now and every day and each and every step he is making ways for me when my heart is full of doubt feels like faith is running out i've come too far to turn around Pushing past the fear, fighting. He is making ways for me. He won't let me down, never, never leave. He is making ways for me. When my heart is full of doubt, feels like faith is running.
God will work it out. God will work it out. God will work it out. One thing I know, one thing I found. God is working out. And wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen, somebody. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus shall wash us and cleanse us uh, from our sins. We serve a risen God, don't we? Come on, we serve a risen God, don't we? We serve a God who is alive and well and is coming again real soon. Are you going to be ready? All right, all right. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be what and be glad in it i am delighted to be here i am excited to be here in fact i'd rather be nowhere else than this place for if there was a better place than this place i would have been in that place but since this place is the best place to be i am here where we've come to worship i don't know what you've come to do i know what i've come to do i've come to praise the lord praise ye the lord somebody I just want to thank you for uh, working with us uh, through our many, our, our many twists and turns with our, with our uh, various protocols. We are now at a place where our masks are not mandatory. You're not required to register. And so we had to, to continue to invite our, our friends and our neighbors. Hey, even bring our enemies if you so choose. It's such a delight. Uh, to be in God's house, to uh, just come by this place and to give him thanks and praise. We had some hot days this week, didn't we? But we're not complaining. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, we're not complaining because it is when it's hot, you can take off things. When it's cold, you're stuck. Uh, but I thank God I turned one year older, so I'm one year closer to qualifying for Forever Young. Um, you know, um, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, we all get there sometime. We all get there sometime. But uh, I, I'm going to take my, my precious time and, and get there uh, when I get there. Uh, this was a week in which we saw miracles as we come to the end of our 40 days of prayer. Uh, we announced an anointing service uh, for today and uh, the names were to be forward. Um, but I, I saw no names. But however, uh, we will not close the gate. I brought the oil. And uh, towards the end of the service, if you feel so impressed that you want an added touch and pray from God uh, for whatever it is that you are uh, challenging God for, uh, we, will, we will certainly make that opportunity available. There's a song I'm going to ask um, our pianist to to begin to play, as Sister Salome is going to come and lead us. I'm going to ask you all to stand. Number 495, there is a place 
of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, as we put the words up on the screen. Let's all stand and sing this song together. Everyone sing as we join There to this is a place of quiet rest. Near? Near to the heart of God. Let's not rush it. Let's take our time. A place uh, where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer Saint Oh, Church. Jesus, bless Redeemer. Oh, sent from the heart of God. Sent from the heart of God. Hold us to wait. Hold us to wait before Oh, near to the heart of God. Near to the heart Oh, let's sing the second stanza. Everybody, know that you know it. Let's really sing it. There is a place. There is oh, a place of comfort, of sweet. comfort sweet. Oh, near to the heart of near God. Near to the heart of God. Ah, it's a place where we a are safe. A place meet. where we our Savior be That place is near. Near to the heart Oh, oh let's raise our voices and say it out. Oh, Jesus, bless oh, Redeemer. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer. Oh, sent from the heart of God. Sent from the heart of God. Our call, God. our prayer, our desire is that you would hold us, hold God. Hold us who wait before thee near to the heart of and I thank God for the third stanza where it says there's a place of full release there is a place of full release oh near to the heart of near God near to the heart of God it's a place where we find joy and peace a place where all is joy and peace and that place that place is near, near to the to heart of the god, heart of god. Hallelujah, that we have a god who loves oh, us oh jesus blessed come on sing it church there's none like jesus from the heart of our desire god. our prayer our hope today that he would hold oh, us those who wait be Near to the heart. That chorus one more time. If you believe in the mighty name of Jesus, let's sing that. Oh Jesus, bless me. Oh Jesus, bless Redeemer. Sent from the heart. Sent from the heart of God. Oh, hold us, hold us, God. Hold us. Wait before thee to the heart. Of Let's keep coming, God. Sister Salome, as I enter into this moment of intercession. We pray, oh God, today. In this place, God, there are people who need a touch from you, need a word from you. God, we could have been in the supermarket. Uh, we could have been in the playing ground. Uh, we could have been at the park. We could have been at work. But God, we have stopped. We've stopped to come to this place. Because we want to meet with you, oh God. I pray today that you will hold us. You will break chains. You will set hearts free from shame and guilt and remorse. Lord, you will liberate us today, God, from feelings of failure, feelings of dirtiness, feelings, Lord, that we can't connect with you and draw us to your heart, God. For it's at your heart there's freedom. At your heart, there's deliverance. At your heart, God, there's a sense that our sins are forgiven, our names are written in the land book of life. And so, God, forgive me of, forgive us of our sins. 
and that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. Speak to your children today. And we consider it done in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And God, may we leave this place declaring it was good to have been in the house of the Lord because we have been near to the heart of God. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Kindly be seated in the presence of a holy God. Thank you, Sister Salome and uh, Brother Joel. And thank you for saying so beautifully. I want to give a shout out to all the fathers in the house. Come on, put your hands together for the daddies in the house. Listen, if you're a father or if you had a father, say amen. I think that's every human being on earth. Hallelujah. It is good. It is good. But listen, I know some of us would like to forget our fathers. I hear that. Uh, some fathers were good. Some not so good. Some were really difficult. But I want you to know that we have a father who's in heaven. We call him our father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be his name. Come on, somebody say amen. It doesn't matter what your earthly father has done. It doesn't matter where you've been. We have an anchor, says the song, that keeps the soul. His name is Jesus. For he shall save his people uh, from their sins. The text, the text for today, as we look at this subject, this entitled Father's Day and Father's Night. Come with me if you've allowed your devices or your Bible uh, to accompany you today to the book of Acts, written by physician Luke as he records the early mo movements of uh, the church. Acts chapter 16. I want to thank Miss Amaria for reading our scripture reading so very well for us. We want to pick up the story at 16. And I want to read in your hearing Acts chapter 16 and verse 16. Acts chapter 16 and verse 16. Here the text tells us. And it came to pass as we went to pray. Somebody say to pray. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor it's good to pray. Turn to the neighbor on the other side and tell him it's up. There's blessing in prayer. All right, you're with the preacher today. And it came to pass as we went to pray, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination uh, met us, which brought her masters much gain by suit, saying, the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew unto us the way of salvation. That sounds good, doesn't it? Not everything that sounds good comes from a good place. Follow the preacher today. And verse 18 tells us, read with the preacher, if you will. I'll read it from the screen so we could read in unison. And the same follow whom? Oh, we, we, no, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're still, uh, 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 let, let's find 17 of, of uh, 16, chapter 16, verse 17. Uh, shall we go together, everybody? Uh, the same follow Paul and us, and Christ saying what? These men are the servants of what? The Most High God will show unto us the way of salvation. Eighteen. Together, everybody. And this did she many days, but Paul being what? Grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of who? Jesus Christ. Come on, say there's power in that name. T tell your neighbor there's power in that name. For it, at the sound of that name, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that what? Jesus Christ says, Lord, there's power. In that name. And so, and so Paul called the spirit out of her. Even though she was saying good things, 
It was coming from a demonic place. Verse 9, it says, and when the master saw that the hope of the gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. Well, we're going to fast forward because we don't have all day here, but I, I, I just want to take some time to show you what God want to lay on us today. We are talking about Father's Day and Father's Night. One would have thought that this woman being delivered would have been good news. How many of us know that sometimes when God changes us, the people around us get mad? Uh, sometimes when we have to say to people, hey, I can't, I can't, or I won't, or I shouldn't, they get mad. They want to run their lives and your life. But I've learned a long time ago, I am not going to allow a paragraph in my life when I'm only a mm. She was delivered, but the next verse tells us that her master saw that hope. Uh, her, their gains were gone. She was making their money, and Paul disrupted the party. So guess what they did? They beat them up and they threw them into prison. Verses 19 to 23 tells us that. And when they were in prison, verse 24, the person who received charge over them or the, or the, the soldier who was really the prison guard, if you please, took them into not just the prison, they were in the prison inside the prison. They weren't just in prison. They were in prison in the prison. He took them to the inner prison of the prison. And he placed their feet in stock. Now, now, now I want you to understand this. Are you with me, Ella Brooks? You're following the preacher today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not only were they in prison, Sister T, they were in the prison of the prison, and just to make sure they weren't going anywhere, they put like handcuffs on their feet and tied it to the wall. So at the current running, not only were they in a bad situation, they were also tied down. You, 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 didn't, you didn't get that. There are times things in our lives are so difficult, we don't only feel in prison, we feel tied down. We feel like we can't move, like things wouldn't change. We, we feel as if we are stuck in a place we don't want to be, and there's nowhere to go. Our minds desire change, but the rest of our body's not coming with us. Mm. Today, we are not in a physical prison, but there are all kinds of prisons that exist. They are prison of circumstance. I call it the circumstantial prison. We find ourselves sometimes getting older Without a spouse, and we feel like we've been imprisoned to singlehood. Can I be honest with the church? I've had a friend who once told me that time was running out, her clock was ticking, and if it moved and it's male and they say, Yes, I get it married. Have mercy. Circumstances. Sometimes, because of immigration issues, we are caught in a prison of circumstances. 
Somebody's getting married. Somebody has died. Somebody is sick, but we can't travel because of our circumstances. For some, those shackles are addictions, whether to substance, to sex, pornography, or behaviors. How many of us know that rage is an addiction? It becomes the thing we do when we feel like we have no other choice. Sometimes that prison might be financial prison. Uh, we feel as if we are working hard, and the harder we work, the more taxes the government takes. I feel like that sometimes. And you ask yourself, does it even make sense to work over time? Both parties in the house are working. And it's still difficult to make ends meet. In a list, according to UNICEF, out of 25 countries, Canada was 17th in level of poverty. I want you to think about that in a place with so much stuff. One in eight Canadians live in poverty. Not because there aren't resources, but because some people are hoarding the resources to themselves. Financial change. You're forced to live where you don't desire to live, but you can't afford to live anybody. Anybody ever feels like that? Or I'm the only one. To get to live where we are now, we once had to leave renting a house, go rent a one-bedroom apartment, and when my son came home, put a mattress down in the living room. Are you listening to the preacher? There are times we feel strapped. Financial change. Sometimes we feel as if we're experiencing the pain of aging. It seems the older we get, the more things hurt, the more things feel like they're falling apart, the steps seem higher. The distance between the bed and the washroom seems further. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Change, I'm saying. For some of us, we're in the chains of difficult relationships. Oof. These are tough chains. When you love people, but you're in pain. Chains of relationship. Uh, son wouldn't speak to me. Daughter wouldn't speak to me. Struggles with my spouse. Gone done counseling. A gone red bus, but still feel like I'm in chains. What do you do when you're thrust in a prison into the inner prison? Of the prison, what do you do? Well, I am so glad you don't have to wait to get the answer, for it's contained in our scriptural passage. Uh, Father, Father's Day and Father's Night. Uh, let's see what verse 25 says. After we read about the stocks or the problems, the challenges. Here is the answer. In the middle of the night, while in prison, while in the inner prison of the prison, while in prison, in the inner prison of the prison, with your feet in stocks, where you feel tied up and tied down. Paul and Silas at midnight, 
started to swear. Is that what a text says? Started to murmur. Is that what a text says? They started to bawl their eyes out. Poor me. Is that what the text says? No, sir. The Bible says, and at midnight, hallelujah, Paul and Silas started to pray and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. This is what I call radical praise. Everything around them shouted, curse God and die. But when you know the God that I serve, when you know Jehovah Jireh, the ones who provide. When you know Jehovah uh, Rohi, who sees. And when you understand Jehovah Shalom, who is our peace. In the middle of a prison. Inside a prison. When you're tied up, tied down. You could remember that the great I am is able to set us free no matter the circumstance. He is still the peace in the midst of the storm. And so this is their thinking of the brethren. The thinking of the brethren. Watch this, everybody. Watch this. If this is indeed the end. If I'm going to die. I'm going to die on the battlefield for the Lord. Come on, somebody. I'm, 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 if I'm going down, brothers and sisters, I'm going down swing. I'm not just going down. I'm going to take some fort with me. Are you listening to me, somebody? And so in the midst of their predicament, in the midst of their difficulty, in the midst of their hardship, in the midst of the pain, they prayed. They sang. They sang praises. They celebrated the goodness of God because God's goodness doesn't change based on my circumstances. I don't respond to God based on what God is doing. It's just who he is. God is good. Yes, sir. Yes, he is. God is good. So they started praying. And they started saying, verse 26 says, and suddenly, there was a great earthquake, and the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened, and every man's bands were loose. I'm so glad, hallelujah, that our God didn't just open the doors. If you had opened the if you had opened the prison door and they were still chained, they would have still been bound. But the God who is Jehovah, when he sets you free, who the Son set free, come on, somebody, is truly free indeed. So not just the prison door, he opened the shackles, everything. They could have walked out, but they recognized that. This miracle was not about them. Come on, somebody. When the goodness of God happens in your life and in my life, it's not always about us. It's about somebody God is trying to save. And so in the midst of this, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, watch this. They didn't move. Uh -huh. The prisoner guard got up 26 and then 28, Paul cried, Love voice, do not harm yourself. The prison guard was now the prisoner. <laughs> That's what God does. He was now the prisoner of Paul because he wanted to commit suicide. Paul says, don't do it. We, we are all here. The God we serve, we don't have to be on the run. He got us. Most of us would have been saying, well, the man not paying attention, let's sneak out because, you know, God opened this, so let's take the opportunity. See, because even when God is wanting to work for us, we try to help out God. Remember Hagar and Sarah and Abraham? Now the Jews and the Arabs can't get along for centuries afterwards. When God is delivering us, let him do his thing. 
give him permission to do what he wants to do. Let's be still and know that he is God. The psalmist says that in 4610. Watch this, everybody. Watch this. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprung it and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs. <laughs> before there were no names. Now he's calling them with a name of authority. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, down thy house, and thou shalt be saved. And that very night, verse 33 through to the end, they got baptized. There are three things I want to leave with us today that I will and then send us away. Number one is this. Number one is this. As fathers, the first thing we need to do is model. We need to do what? We need to model. Paul and Silas. Silas was the intern. Paul was the experienced preacher. Paul was the father figure in Silas's life. When they got to prison, if Paul started to shake and grumble and fuss and complain, Silas would have followed suit. But because Paul knew that God was able, because Paul knew that God was dependable, because Paul knew that God was well able, he says, hey, hey, hey. Let me start singing and praying, and Silas will make it a duet. Hallelujah, somebody. As fathers, God calls us as men uh, to love our wives and our children as Christ loved the church and give himself for it. What Jesus is saying, no man of love have this, than to lay down his life. For people who didn't love him in the first place. For while we were yet sinners, while we were still rebelling, while we were doing our own thing and didn't care, Jesus died for you and for me. Would somebody say amen? A model. Fathers must model. The second thing is, fathers must motivate. Fathers must what? Beaten. Forcing, coercing, only result in short time action, not necessarily change. As we lead our families, men, fathers, as we minister to our children and to others in the church, let us motivate through love. You see, Christ's method alone will bring through success. Uh, the servant of the Lord says on uh, Ministry of Healing, page 143, he mingled with them as one who desired their good, sought to fill their needs, and when he earned their trust, he bid them follow me. The challenge sometimes in a Christian home and even in the church is that we mistake Love with rules. Follow the preacher now. One friend of mine who studied theology uh, after graduation, opted not to be a pastor, once said to me, the more laws you make is the more outlaws you make. I'm going to say that again. I'm glad you asked. The more laws we make, is the more outlaws we create. Motivation says, give people a good reason to do something. And when they respond from love, they will do it whether you're present or not. Rules and regulation says, if I simply says, you need to do this because this is what a rule says, as soon as they're big enough and old enough, they will stop complying because they're forced to do it. That's why Jesus says, the Bible says in uh, Ezekiel 36, 36, there about that he's going to change the heart and give us a fleshy heart because he understood when they made the covenant, the, the Israelite says, all that you say we will do. And they did nothing. And the truth is, if we're honest, we're kind of like that today. That's why God has to change us from the inside out so that we could recognize 
We are not here on Sabbath because the, the Bible says come on Saturday. That, that's not a reason we're here. Well, I hope that's not a reason you're here. Because the truth is, it's more than that. It's about the relationship with the one who created us, who redeemed us, and who one day is coming back to glorify our body. Motivate. As we lead in church, we need to motivate the members or create an environment in which they're motivated to serve. Like we have the upcoming series and we have an opportunity to go door to door, give out invitations, give it to our friends. Uh, we have our food pantry every third uh, Wednesday of the month where we can bless our community, three to six. Opportunities to make a difference in the lives of the people around us. So fathers must model, fathers must motivate, and fathers must engage in mission. Notice, Paul could have taken Silas and bolt, bolted, but they waited for an opportunity to win some soul for the kingdom. When you do kingdom living, kingdom living is wrapped up in kingdom provision. Kingdom provision is connected to kingdom performance. Kingdom performance is tied to kingdom reward. I am so glad that we serve a God who leads from the front, who does everything he asks us to do. Here's what he asks us to do as we come to a close. He asks us to persevere and do not get tired in doing good. Even in the midst of his pain on the cross, as they plotted the crown of thorns and mocked him, claiming he said he's king of the Jews. As they beat him, for he stripes save one, as the pieces of flesh were ripped from his back, he was in a prison of circumstance. Here was the dilemma Jesus found himself. And one person actually taunted him with his prison sentence. Here's the prison sentence. Why don't you save yourself if you're the son of God? His sentence was, if you save yourself, all of us will be lost. Could he save himself? Surely. But the prison, the, 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 the circumstantial prison Jesus found himself in, he said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. In the midst of the hardship, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the difficulty, in the midst of the suffering, his side pierced. Feet kneeled through, hands kneeled through, dying for a world that didn't care. Yet he did it because he wanted to set you free. He wanted to set you free and you free and me free. He wanted to set us free from our sins. For who the Son set free is free. And he says, and if anyone sin, he says in 1 John, we have an advocate. With the Father, if we confess our sins, he says in verse 9 there, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Thank God for his grace. There is nothing you have done. There is nothing I have done that is beyond the grace of God. I don't care how long you did it. I don't care how bad it was, how terrible the consequence was. Today, I say to you, if you confess your sins, Jesus will remove that shackle, that burden, and set you free. But not only that, he can give you the power to never go back there again. Thank God for his blood that shall never lose its power. I don't know what you came to do today, but I, I came to praise the Lord. For in the midnight hour, the earth came, the earth shook, 
The prison doors were open. The shackles were loose. But you and I, we have a choice. Do you walk out into the freedom that God has called you to? Or do you go shackle yourself saying, I'm in prison? What's it going to be? Too many of God's children walk around as if they're still in prison to the enemy. We've been freed by the power of Jesus Christ. But we got to emancipate ourselves from, from, from the sin spung on us. And that's a mental job. I can't fix you. I can't make you feel free. I can describe the feeling of freedom. Like I got up this morning, got on my knees, said my prayer. Well, not on my knees, but you know what I mean. Prayed. Father, my prayer of surrender, always in the morning, Father, I offer myself to thee. That's the prayer. Starting the day with him. Both good and bad, I pray that you not remove from me every single defect of character that stands in the way of my usefulness to my fellows. Grant me strength as I go from here to do your will. That's my prayer. Because I can get up and I can look at the long list of sins I committed, but that's not helping me. What helps me is the grace of God that says you are free. Your shackles have been loose. Your bonds have been released. For the God of the mountain. It's the God in the valley. And the God of the daytime is still the God of the nighttime. His Father's day and Father's night. Paul was walking with Jesus. He got tied up, tied down. But Jesus came and set him free. What do you need freedom from today? Jesus is about to pass by. Hallelujah. Joel, could you join us on the piano? The song says, I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The path of sin, too long I've trod. Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home. Coming home. Never more to roam. Open wide the gates of love. Lord, I'm coming home. Sister Tamika, could you put that song up there for us? As we use that as a closing song. And Sister Salome, could you come and just lead us in that song? I've wandered far away from home, away from God. Now I'm coming home. The first call I'm giving out today, number 296. The first call today is for men, fathers, who, who want to recommit your life to God. Maybe you want to give your life to God for the first time. I'm not separating. This is not about me. This is about what God wants to do. If we're going to have a change, if, if we're going to have a shift, if we're going to have a deepening of our spiritual experience, let it begin with us. Let's sing this song. Let's stand and sing, everybody. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. Oh, the path of sin. The path of sin too long I've trod. Lord, Lord, I'm coming home. Chorus says, coming home. Coming home. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Coming 
Oh, oh God, we're going to Rome. When you, when you have the best, you forget the rest. Nothing up there is compared to what to God has for us. But we got to step into it with Jesus. Open wide thine arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. Before we sing the second stanza, keep playing, you all. Before we sing the second stanza, when I ask the men of this congregation to make a commitment, if it's your desire by the grace of God to lead your family into the kingdom of God, I want you to leave where you are as we sing the second stanza. We're going to still physically dance, but spread out all in the front on the platform. As we sing the second stanza, come signifying you want to lead your family into the kingdom of God. As we make a commitment as men, say, by God's grace, I'm standing in the gap for my family. As we sing the second stanza, leave where you are and come on behalf of your family. I've wasted many years. Have wasted many Precious years. Now I'm coming. We'll make room for the men behind now you. I'm coming. Come on, fill up all in the middle. Fill it up. Come press forward. Press forward. I now repent with bitter. Come on, men. Step forward. Step forward. I'm coming home. Lord. I'm coming. Say we want to lead our families to the kingdom. Everybody say, come in home. Let's say it. Coming home. Hallelujah. Coming. In the presence of God, there's always fullness of joy. Open. Never, never more to run. The song says, open wide the arms of love. Oh. Why I'm suffering, Lord, I'm coming home. Before we sing the next stanza, before we sing the next stanza, keep playing, you all. I want to pray for the men, and then I'm going to make a special call for the women in this place. Because I'll tell you, marriage will either take you to heaven or will drag you close to hell. I'm telling you. But I thank God that there's a God who, in spite, despite what has happened, is able, even when we're inside a prison, tied up and tied down, to bring deliverance. Shall we pray to Father God today in this moment? These men are standing before me. I don't know their lives. I know mine. And God, when I look at my life, there's some dark spots. There's some things I wish I could forget. There are things I wish I hadn't done. But God, I can't change that. What I could do is to give it to you, God, and ask that the God who is able to touch uh, sin as red as crimson, uh, you can make it as wet as snow. Lord, I ask the same for these men. I don't care what it is. Lord, if it's difficulty with money, difficulty with health, and difficulties with, with, with relationship, whatever it is, God, in the name of Jesus, set them free. If it's adultery, fornication, oh God, who you set free is free indeed. Bless these men, Lord. Cover them with your Holy Spirit's presence and power. Oh God, I pray when they leave here, they'll never be the same again. May they have devotions in the home. May they model for their families what they ought to be. May they motivate, may they engage in mission. May they say, I'm thick and tired of being ordinary, regular. I want a deep, rich experience with you, oh God. Father, set them free. That they may live in abundance. That they may live as prince and kings. Knowing that you are our heavenly father. You will provide all that we need. 
even right now, God, somebody is recommitting their heart to God. Somebody is saying, God, I, I can't do the rock and chair religion anymore. I'm stepping all the way in, going all the way in with Jesus. Seal that commitment, dear God. May the freedom that comes from knowing that you are for us and not against us rest and abide with these men. We saw pray in Jesus' name. Men, don't move. Don't move. As we prepare to sing the third stanza, I'm going to ask the family members, and we're going to spread out all we can to join these men because no man is no island. Just come from where you are. Just press down. Join these men. Make room. If you're here, just come and find your connection. I want to pray with you. But before we sing, I want to appeal to the women in the house. Maybe you are not a father. To the men, you're not a father. And to the women, you're, you're not married. But you want to say it today, God, there's stuff in my life that I need to be free of. You know, my wife and I, we, we have two different personalities around how we pack the house. I'm a kind of guy, when something new come, I'm ready to get rid of the whole thing. She's still but what of a rainy day. But sometimes you got to declutter. Because when you're taking long to find something in your closet, it means you got too many things to choose from. But what I'm saying is, sometimes in our journey, our life experience, sometimes there are habits. Sometimes there, there, are, there are, are, are addictions. Sometimes there are attitudes that chain us. And, and sometimes there are things that if, God, if others knew other than God, we would ask for a hole to open up to take us in. I'm, I'm being real for we got stuff but I thank you that Jesus is better than uh, the ad that says point and the don't disappear it's better than that you don't have to point you just have to whisper pray and Jesus takes your stuff make him one another call if you want Jesus to deliver you from something in your life today just raise your hand and take it back now I want to include you in my prayer. You'll just pray for deliverance for something, anything, whatever it is. Hallelujah. And if you feel so impressed, as the Spirit leads, come down to the altar if you want that extra special prayer. When you're down here, I'll pray with you because I too need, I too need that deliverance. I too need the presence of God. Because I don't want to, after I preach to others, Brother Gary, myself, to cast the wheel. Waste of time. The world is ending. I'm not going to let the kingdom of God come back. And I'm still struggling around. One preacher once says, either enjoy the whole world and be lost, or be truly dedicated to Jesus and be saved. But don't miss this world and still go to hell just because you're semi church Hallelujah! Who else will come? Third stands as we sing, say and come. As we draw the service to our close today. I'm tired of sin and stray, Lord. No, I'm coming home. I'm tired of sin and straying, Lord. Now I'm coming Thy love. I'll trust thy love. Believe oh, believe thy, thy word. word. Lord, I'm coming home. Lord, I'm coming home. Oh, let everybody say it like we believe it. Coming home, Lord. Coming Is there one moment come for Jesus today? 
Remember, seven members, your Lord and Savior. You want to say, you, your time running? Today, you're not running away. You're running to Jesus. If that's you, why don't you come? Oh, but why? You'll find white arms of Jesus with you. What's your come? What's your come? Lord. Lord, I'm coming home. We're on the platform here, going to kneel. And you can kneel if you're here too. As we say this very special prayer. Oh God, you are help in ages past. You are hope. For years to come. I thank you. You are shelter. In the stormy blast. Oh God. Where can we go. To be outside of you. If we go to the top of the mountain. Behold you are there. If we make to the bottom of the sea. You are there Jehovah. If we put our hell in, gray, in the grave, if you are there and you are here right now with us, like the psalmist, we're saying, Oh God, examine our heart. See if there be, Oh God, any wicked way in us. And we give you permission, God, to remove it, take away the dross. Remove selfishness and self-centeredness and self-interest. Lord, remove philosophical ideas that are destroying our families, that are tearing out the very fabric of the thing we say we support. Oh God, today, change our hearts. God, give us the spirit of Jesus that we can be like Jesus. Long-suffering and patient and kind. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, touch our hearts. You said in Revelation 3.10, Behold, you stand at the door and knock. If any man or woman open, you will come in and have lunch with us. Oh God, today we are opening our hearts. We're asking you to sit on the throne. May you order our steps, God. May you direct our thoughts. Like 1 Corinthians 10, 4 says, Bring every thought captive. Oh God, that we may walk after your spirit and not fulfill the deeds of the flesh. We confess our sins even right now, God. We replace them before you, God, and I pause in silence that each will confess their sin even right now, God. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for delivering us. And oh God, I enter into specific prayer. Even right now. Someone's marriage is in trouble. Someone has said in the last week, I'm tired. Oh, I pray that right now, God, that you will go into that circumstance. And that you will loose those shackles and bring deliverance. Oh God, somebody today is sick and tired of being sick and tired. They've changed medication. They've changed doctor. They've changed medical regimen. But oh God, today we cry out to Dr. Jesus, the great physician, the sympathizing Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, through your blood, oh God, that washes us and cleanses us, that you will touch heads, you will touch hearts, you will touch every internal organ. Restore soundness, God. Deliver us. Whether it be cancer, kidney failure, whether it be a diabetes or prostate, whatever it is, God. We cry out to you. No other help we know if thou withdraw yourself from us. Oh, God, where shall we go? We thank you for the healing. The lady just touched your hand. She didn't know a lot about you. But God, we believe, help our unbelief. We consider it done. 
because your promises are sure. Father, there is parent-child relationships today that need your healing. God, turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the hearts of the children to the parents that you promised in the book of Malachi. Oh God, let them know that together they're stronger. Father, smooth out whatever it is that needs to be smoothed out. The Lord, there are broken relationships even in church. Have mercy, God. Sometimes we're sitting in the pew and we're glad that there are people between us and somebody else on the pew. Oh God, today in the name of Jesus, help us to surrender. Help us to let go of envy. Help us to give up malice. Help us, oh God, to give up jealousy. Help us to give up hatred in the name of Jesus. Set your church free. That we may love each other like Jesus loved. That we may pray and support each other like Jesus did. May we experience what Paul and Silas had. The songwriter says, my chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for hearing our prayer. And we ask, when we get up off our knees or with our heads bowed, may we never be the same, never, never, never be the same again. If any man a woman be in Christ. We have become new creatures. All things are passed away. All things have become new. And we praise you in Jesus. Mighty name let the church say. those who are not required anointed to go back to your seat but if you want to be anointed just we just ask you to form a line down the middle aisle as we look to bring this well spent time together it's not mandatory just if you feel so impressed you can stay or you can come if you haven't come yet that's alright if there's nobody that's alright if there's somebody we say praise the Lord either which way our souls will be satisfied Coming home. home. Song says, Coming home. home. Nevermore. somebody we serve a good God who have been delivered from much have much to rejoice in and we thank God for his spirit and for being present today and uh, we just we are just so grateful and just so thankful for the presence and the anointing of God in this place Let's stand together and sing our closing songs. Our praise team comes. Um, number 317, lead me to Carberry, king of my life. I crown the knowledge. You put the words up on the screen. Um, 317. Let's all stand. Yes, I forget thy thorn crowned brow. Lead 
lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget the same. Lest I forget the same. Oh, lest I forget thy agony. Lest I forget thy agony. Oh, lest I forget. Lest I forget thy love for me. Oh, lead me to Calvary. Lead me to Calvary. Circumstance, everybody, show me the truth. Show me the truth where thou wast laid. Tenderly mourn I went. Tenderly mourn I went. Angels and robes of white array. Angels and robes of white array. Guarded me by thy side. Guarded me by thy side. That's why we sing, lest I forget this sacrifice. Lest I forget Gethsemane. Lest I forget. Lest I forget thy name. Lest I forget thy love. Lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Let's sing the next anthem. Be like Mary through the blue. Come with the gift to thee. Show to me now the empty tomb. Lead me to Calvary. awesome God I don't know about you but I I feel like by his grace I'm ready to be translated you know God knows what he is about this is the message he wanted here today and even though he did it through a roundabout way we give him thanks amen hallelujah to the Lamb of God Heads about the eyes are closed. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Both now and forevermore. Amen. And if you kindly be seated. We want to say thank you to those who have joined us online. We are open, no more registration. Our masks are optional. And we look forward to a big Sabbath next week. Special service here uh, as we get towards the mid of the summer. You can't afford to miss it. I want to remind us that our AY uh, continues this afternoon with a very special Father's Day um, celebration uh, at 6 in the p.m. Uh, so you will want to, you'll want to be here. Remember, there's no Pathfinder Club today. Just want to remind us of that. And we have literature at the back, um, even at the.